Hey, welcome back to part 11 of the world's slowest machine tool build. My main focus has been the carriage for the cross slide, but first I wanted to go and finish this motor bracket. You can see the clamp shift just a little bit as I go and mark these holes. I was worried about that being a problem, but it ended up being mostly okay. I've been pretty pleased with last video when I went and slotted the holes that mount this to the cross slide. It gives me a lot more adjustability, and that way I can fit my axle and coupling to be exactly the right distance apart, which I probably wouldn't have gotten right otherwise. I always see people using taps in a drill and just blasting them straight through the metal. Besides the fact that they're using a spiral tap, is there anything else that I actually need to be able to do that? Because this takes forever, so it'd be nice to speed this up. Now just to quickly jump back in time on the main piece here, the cross slide carriage, I went and first cut this big giant chunk of I-beam down into a rectangular piece and flattened the edge of it. And then I went and used Calvin's mill and milled the first side flat. It's a very small mill, so you really gotta take your time, especially using those little bits. I think I broke like three of them trying to do this just by rushing a little bit too much. Not the fault of the mill by any means, just need to take my time for my own sake. I then flipped over the piece and milled a very approximately square side to it. And then actually later on went and trued that up and made sure it was precisely square and re-milled it here. I milled two pockets in the steel for the rail cars and apparently I did not get any footage of that. But then I went and actually took my rail cars and started uh, center punching them. So we've now actually caught up to real time. These rail cars are actually a pretty tight fit, especially in the slot here. Um, but the other set is pressed right up against the wall. So that's actually why I didn't bother putting those rails on the cross slide and then center punching them that way. There's just not very much room for them to move regardless. I started drilling all the holes I need to mount the rail cars to the carriage, but then all of a sudden my drill press stopped working and started making this bizarre noise. I took the belts off and everything and after a few seconds I actually realized that the key had somehow slipped out the top of the axle here and come off entirely. It didn't fall down, the only place it could have gone is by rising up that keyway. I have no idea how that could possibly have happened, but it did. So I went and replaced the key and then it worked just fine. After all that excitement, I'm back to drilling my carriage mounting holes. Of course, I'm now drilling a hole in my vise, which isn't great, but you win some, you lose some. Do most people actually use the bolt slots in their uh, drill press table there? I mean, I guess I could clamp down my vise with a bolt. I can't really think of too many situations where I'd ever need or want that. I wasn't sure if maybe there's other things that this can be used for, or maybe I'm just misusing this badly. But I feel like most of the time I just kind of either hold on to whatever it is, or if it's something really small, just put it in a vise or a clamp or something to get myself something where I can hold it from further away. I do notice that my drill press table has some pretty significant vibration when the drill press is actually running, so maybe that has something to do with it. With those holes drilled, I just wanted to see if I could actually fit the carriage onto the cross slide, and I just wanted to get some sort of a temporary alignment here, make sure that everything was going to actually fit correctly before I got any further in the process. So I just screwed all these bolts in by hand. Of course one didn't fit, so I went and used this scrap piece of steel and put a hole in it to test if a larger hole would still work for this size of bolt, just to have kind of a visual reference, and it looked great. I drilled out the rest of the holes to get them a little bit more play, and actually there was one hole that was just a little bit further off, and so I had to drill it actually even like 1 or 2 64ths larger than the others, but there's still plenty of grip on the head. 
Then I go and chamfer the tops of all my holes and do my next fit up. This one actually worked out a lot better. That little extra bit of clearance made a huge, huge difference. I'm really liking my new Allen wrenches. The plastic sleeves on them are super useful so that way you can just see by color what size you actually need. It's way easier than trying to either measure them or look for a little marking somewhere on them. You just grab the yellow one and know it's four millimeter, pink being three or whatever. It saves a lot of time. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do with this is I wanna mark the hole for the main through hole that I'm gonna need for my cross slide ball screw. So I'm gonna go and put the bolts in for these cross slide rails and at least get most of the bolts in here that I'll need. And then I'm gonna also bolt down the cross slide carriage to the cross slide rails just to get everything nice and stiff. Put that end piece in and then I'm actually gonna go and take one of my transfer punches and put it where the ball screw would go to make my mark. It's probably not perfect this way, but it gives actually a, a really decent indication and I don't have to rely on basically any measurement. Now, one thing that is gonna be difficult is I do not actually have enough room on my drill press to drill this hole. I ended up just setting that aside and I'm gonna deal with that this coming week instead. Now I'm jumping to something completely different here and forgot to record the for first part so it's gonna be a little bit hard to follow. But basically I ended up wanting to switch over and see if I could make some progress on that forge from a little while ago. It worked fine but it wasn't quite as powerful as I was looking for. Mostly I just wanted to change things up for a few minutes and work on something else. I decided that I would use the top of this stainless steel bollard as a, the air intake for a forced air burner. I think that's going to have a lot more power than what I have right now. First I actually had to just prepare it and cutting it off was easy obviously with the angle grinder but getting this little coupling that's welded on the inside was amazingly difficult. I don't know why but my drill bits were really having trouble getting through the weld. Eventually though I drilled through enough of the weld that I could grab it with a wrench on the other side and just snap it off. Once that was finally off I used the die grinder to clean out the hole a little bit and to true up the hole. And then I used the angle grinder to cut six slots in the sides. That way I can stretch out the edges of the pipe there and make it fit around the pipe as I push it through. Then we just use the hammer to hit it into place until it's fully seated. I sealed the bottom with masking tape and then used 5 minute epoxy just to get a good seal for the air. I could probably have used something better, but this was quick and easy. And here's the final arrangement. The blower on the shop vac was way too powerful so we had to give it some space, but I've got some ideas for a different blower to use in the future. While the furnace was running, I took a few seconds to use some scrap threaded rod to just bend a little tool to remove any slag from the crucible. Once the crucible was mostly up to temperature, we started dropping aluminum in it and put this big block of aluminum that you can see just starting to tip over and melt. I need to come up with a better way to store the lid than putting it on some scrap pieces of angle. I need to come up with a way easier way of actually pouring this because right now you're sitting there with a 20 pound weight on a two foot lever trying to twist it with your wrists and it just is way too difficult to do. But on the second try here, we did a lot more easily by kind of looping it with the back. Um, still not as easy as it should be, but it worked. I know this is sort of an odd place to end the video, but I just wanted to actually get this video released, so I'm going to send it out now, and for the next video, we'll be going and trying to put that final hole in the cross slide carriage and starting to hook up the VFD, which I just got today. So thanks so much for watching.